Now, the one thing it's that people need to understand is that there's differences between a parlor house girl and a crib house girl. A lot of the movies that you see, the girls are wearing small little short dresses, little can-can dresses, everything's hanging out. That's a crib girl. A parlor house girl is what Laura was. Parlor house girls dressed in the best clothes, fur coats, jewelry. During the day, a parlor house girl would take singing lessons and drawing lessons, and she would learn different instruments, the piano, the flute perhaps, so when the men all came into powerhouses, they were the high-end clientele men. These were the rich men. These were the mine owners. They would come in. They would have elegant dinners. There was maids. There were servants. There was bouncers. Now, when a man would come into a powerhouse, the man would purchase one of these. This is called a brass check. Now, the man would go up to the madam, and he would purchase a brass check, or two or three, depending on what kind of night he wanted to have. When he went and found his girl a choice, he would give her this brass check to go up to her room. In her room, in her nightstand, she would open the drawer, and there would be a small little coin box. It was nailed into her nightstand, so he could not take his coin back. He would then go, and he would insert it into the little box, and then they would go, and they would do their, their business. Well, the next morning, when everything was said and done, the madam had the only key. She would unlock that box and pay the girl half of what she had earned. The other half went to her room and board. They had the best food, three meals a day, and everything was taken care of. Now, when it comes to a parlor house, the clientele changes. They want new girls. They want fresh meat to come in, not the same girls all the time. So after a couple of months, when the girls started getting stale, they were fired and the new girls were brought in. Now, if a girl wanted to stay in parlor houses, she would have to move to a new town, normally would change her name. Then she would start all over again. But if she wanted to stay in that town and she liked the clientele, maybe had some regulars that really wanted her to stick around, she would get a crib. A crib was a two-room apartment, one story. There were two room shacks. And then you would go down there, and the girls' names would be written above each of the doors, Frankie or Glenda or Mary, up above each of the ones. Then when you went into these rooms, some of them were very fancy, <coughs> wallpaper, lace curtains. The girls, they rented these just like you would an apartment. Then they got to keep all the money that they earned. Some of the girls would put up the wallpapers. Most of them had drawings or photographs of people having sex, kind of get the guy in the mood like he needed any help. Now, on payday, the mines would actually pay the miners on different days of the week. That way, they wouldn't storm the cribs on payday. Stopped in Cripple Creek, they spoke to some of the parlor girls, and they spoke to some of the crib girls. The crib girl that they spoke to said that on payday, she could, earn, she could have 70 men in one evening. Now, there was different prices for different girls. The paler your skin and the redder your hair, the more money you could make. Also, if you spoke French, you could actually make twice what you could make if you didn't speak French. Men were convinced French girls were better in bed. So the parlor house girls would dye their hair red, and they also got on laudium, an opiate. It actually made their skin extremely ashy white, glazed their eyes, made their job a little bit easier, stayed out of the sun, and were able to get more money. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little painful. Now, now when a man did have a, a venereal disease, such as the clap, the only treatment at that time was for the doctor to take this little injector and put it up the pee hole and inject these small little pills of mercury up into the man's bladder. Now, he would continue to do this until the man foamed at the mouth. Now, any sores that were on the body or anywhere on the body, you would actually rub mercury cream onto the sores to burn them off of your body. Now, despite this, Men still refused to wear condoms. And they would lay with these girls. I mean, imagine being a guy, you come out of the mines and there's 70 men lined up out each and <coughs> every one of those cribs and you're still refusing to wear a condom. It's a little creepy. You're gonna be seeing, and the pictures that are in the book are from her own personal album. The thing I like about it is that movies have shown that these girls were just beautiful, glamorous. No, they weren't. Most of these girls were not very cute and they weren't very small. But easy is easy, so. <laughs> so I'm going to be showing you the slideshow. When it comes to prostitution, you have girls that do it for different reasons. This was the Old West, of course, up until the 1940s. It's the same things that happen now. You have like Laura, she simply wanted pretty things. She wanted fur coats, she wanted diamonds, and this is the way she could get it. You could either work for a dollar a day as a waitress or a dollar a lay. <laughs> It's your choice. She wanted the dollar a lay so she could get the fur coats and the diamonds. You also have the girls of the Victorian era who were taught, if you sleep with a man and he doesn't marry you, you're ruined. 
No one's ever, ever going to want you. So these girls figured, okay, well, let's go be prostitutes. So they would go up to the mining camps and do their business because they were taught, you're ruined, you might as well just go do that. Then you had the third type who say you have a wagon train with an entire family. They're coming over from the East Coast. They're going to go to Cripple Creek and open up a hardware store. They pack all their things, the whole family goes. There's bandits, there's Indians, there's robbers, there's diseases. By the time they get up there, maybe it's mom, three kids, two stray kids that she found somewhere else that have been abandoned. She can't go and, su and support all these kids being a washerwoman up at Cripple Creek. So she would end up becoming a prostitute. So there was different reasons that these girls become prostitutes. Oh, I, oh I'm sorry, you well, raised... I did, I did. I yeah. Oh, uh, well, I'm just wondering about the age. I mean, this couldn't be a lifelong profession, right? I mean, what was the general... Or was it? I mean... Well, the thing is that, at, at, like with, with Laura, what she had done was she knew that there's only a time span. Once you got into your late 30s, early 40s, you were done. Either you were going to get married off, or you're going to live off the money that you had saved, or you're going to own a parlor house. There was just, you are going to have to invest your money somehow. So what Laura did was talking to people like Mr. Stratton and different high-end people. She learned how to be a businesswoman. So she saved every dime that she made. She said, if I, bought a if I got a dress, someone else paid for it. If I ate, someone else paid for that. She goes, I put all my money. When she bought the entire block, she paid cash for that. When she bought her car, she paid cash for it. She saved every dime that she had because she knew. Now, when they were going to close the parlor houses down in 1913, her whole idea was, well, I could always rent them out as apartments. That way, I still have a way to make a living. So she's a very, very smart businesswoman. But you're right. About your late 30s, early 40s, and you're about done. Well, like, was it unusual for them to marry or not? Oh, it was very, very common for them to marry. Actually, a lot of the miners and the railway men would actually go to the parlor houses, not the cribs, because the cribs were the worn out girls. They would go to the parlor houses to go and find wives. But I actually met the people who that, who that was actually their, um, their aunt. I think it was their, their uncle's wife. And they, they said that she was always very, very quiet, was never able to have children, because of course she was sterile, and that she was a very, very good cook. And you can see from the picture, she was a very, very good cook. <laughs> what did they take for birth control? Um, yeah, actually, in my Leadville chapter, what it is is Fern, the, the girl that you saw, she explained it. And there's also there's a thing called the Comstock Law. Now, the Comstock Law back in that time outlawed birth control. It was because Mr. Comstock and his wife could not have babies. They had one baby, it died, she was never able to get pregnant. So he decided, well, then we're never going to prevent another child from being born. So he made everything illegal. Doctors would tell people, oh, well, if you use birth control, you know, you're going to go crazy. You're going to go blind. You're going to get cancer. I mean, it was all these stupid reasons. But there was ways around it. Now, Mr. Colgate, of all people, invented a birth control that he could get around the law with. What he did was he made Vaseline, of course. We all know what Vaseline is. On the back of the Vaseline container, he would give you the directions on how to make this into birth control. That was legal. He had an, a certain kind of acid, this little powder, that you would purchase separately. Then you would mix it into the Vaseline according to the directions on the outside of the container, mix it together, and use it like a spermicide. So he was able to get around that law by not selling it mixed. And the one thing that they were told was the greased egg doesn't hatch. So they used a lot of Vaseline. <laughs> they also douched with Listerine. <laughs> and Lysol. And then they would also use it to clean their house and clean everything else. <laughs> that, of course, is what made a lot of the girls sterile, was because you can't really be douching with Listerine and Lysol and not become sterile. But yeah. But there was lots of different ways that they try to keep themselves from getting pregnant. Any other questions?